Hey, so I am going to do a street photography edit. Um, street photography has a very typical or several very typical styles, including a black and white. I'm going to do a color, keep this color. Um, this was yesterday walking around Denver on 16th Street Mall, uh, which is a pedestrian precinct in Denver, runs the length of the town. Uh, lots of interesting people like this guy. And his dog. Um, when I am out and about, I use a Nikon D3S with this lens. Um, and this is my carry everywhere camera. But the Nikon D3S with this lens is my carry everywhere. Uh, I tried Fuji mirrorless. I tried smaller Nikon's. I bought a Nikon D5000 series just for this. Uh, I tried using my D7100 or whatever it is I have kicking around. And at the end of the day. The D3S with this lens on a black rapid strat is just the ultimate street machine for me. Well, a D5 would be nicer, but I don't have one. Compared to my other cameras, that is the ultimate for me. I've dropped it twice uh, and broken a floor with it. <laughs> so it's just bomb proof. It's a great thing to have around. Um, 250, around 250, they're going for two 250. I'll, I'll do a video on... I'll put this on a crop sensor body and use it as a standard lens and then I'll do some more stuff with the D3S with it and maybe even the D800 to show some high res stuff. But anyway, that's my favorite street lens. Uh, so I was walking along, saw this guy, gave him some money and um, asked if I could shoot him and he said sure. And I shot a few but I just like this one because I like the way the dog they're both kind of looking the same way, so I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a, um, a treatment on this. And let's just see where it goes. Uh, you see, it goes dark because, like I always say, I don't use a base curve. If I used a base curve, it would use look something like that, which is not nice at all. Uh, it's maybe a little underexposed. Um, oh, anyway, so let me just do the basics on it. So the basics for me, first of all, is kind of get the exposure into the realm of where I want it, in the dark, which is right about there. Um, white balance, I think I'm totally fine with this out of camera. Uh, it was on auto shade so we're gonna do a little bit of an a little bit of an s so I'm just gonna do the normal things I do to get a camera to get a shot towards kind of my normal I'm gonna push the saturation up a little bit more than I usually would crop right click draw a line yep and then the crop I think let's see probably a five by seven crop just take that edge to the edge leave some space on the left to where they're looking they're looking into it uh, I think that works I think that works. Okay, so fix. Let's fix uh, his face. It's a little bit shadow there, so I'm going to boost. I'm going to clone an exposure module. I'm going to do a super quick and dirty. Just that. Got a tiny bit of spill, I think, just over the edge there. Pull that in. That shadow looks fairly natural. But yeah, now I have his face is nicely lit. I like that. And you can see now, so his hands 
are slightly dirty. Clothes dirty. What grabs me is the shoes here. So let's turn this into street-ish. The first obvious thing to do is to bring local contrast way up. And uh, where are we? We're F4 here, so I'm not getting the dog super sharp. Like, not mega, mega sharp. Um, but yeah, that has just made all the details just pop. Everything. So we've got two real things I'm going for. I'm going for overly, somewhat exaggerated sharpness. Maybe some equalizer. As a sharpen. Let's see if we use the sharpen. Oh, way, 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 way too much. But what if I. No. Double click to just reset that. Maybe I'll just do a touch over here. Just to bring out the super fines. I don't think that's too much. Um, so now it's still, it's getting there, but, so I've got the texture I want, although I think I want to, with, I want that effect. Uh, I have different, a couple of different ways I could do that. Let's just see if I can do it really quick and dirty with a huge, Maybe I'll come back to that, but let's see. The way that is blackening up there is just really nice. But maybe I'll use another exposure module, create new instance. Ooh, yeah. I really like that. Um. But now I have to limit it to that. So somebody who's smarter than me would probably use a parametric mask here. Um, but I mean, I'm very much I'm a big believer in keeping it simple. So I just kind of want a touch there. Just maybe too much. Maybe to touch by the dog there. Do I like that? Do I like that? Kind of, sort of. It's a little bit much. I think if I make it a little bit less aggressive, I'll be okay with it. So it's just bring, yeah, so just darkening a little bit. And then if I bring that vignette back just to affect that edge more, yeah. So now we have some interesting colors. We have a, we have a red wall ish. We have a cool, guitar with some sunburst. We've got some skin. Uh, yeah, the contrast and dirt's coming up on those hands. That's a goat. Wow. That's not a bad guitar. Um, so I'm basically going to take a couple of points here and play around. Yeah, that's the one. This didn't really do anything. But popping that. So I'm okay with where the skin tone went to here. I love the richness of this. I love the richness of the wall. I love the richness of this. This is bugging me. 
so I'm actually going to use this vignette a little bit more just to take the edge off that corner. Not saturation. I think boost saturation. Just to take a little bit of the blaringness off that. What's that doing? That's interesting. What about um, popping the shadows and dropping highlights can be super interesting. And then it's a weird contrast shift. Yeah. okay with this the guitar doesn't look the guitar does not look like blown out it's fine the only thing I want to check is I want to play around with the local contrast now and see if I want a little bit less definitely want it. I mean it's definitely a part of what makes this special but where it was at 200 is maybe a little bit much. That's definitely too much but having said that I don't know. I just want it on the edge of too much. Because now if I turn that off, it's it's like, wow, I've lost everything I like about it. Mm, too much. Sometimes I have to... Okay. So I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to look at this picture for 10 seconds. And then switch it on. And I prefer it. That's just about right. And I, I don't. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe play a little bit more with this whole color treatment. Yeah, that has just warmed up those. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's just warming up those reds a little bit more, even. Yeah. I like that a lot. So how long has that been? So I've been talking for 13 minutes. I blethered on about Denver for a while. So that's probably about, what, an eight minute edit? Um, which is what I aim for. I'm not going to sit. I don't have the patience to sit and spend really any more than that on an image. On Darktable, you don't really need to. I'm not a landscape photographer, so um, I'm not coming across complex landscape. Uh, but let's just for fun see what happens if we do a quick black and white on this. So the lighting is the exposure is good. Ooh. So that's interesting. There were a lot there are a lot of reds. So by going into the red, I'm lowering contrast. If I go to the blue, whoa, that's freaky. What about if I just go to the edge of the reds with a bigger compared to that? It's pretty legit as a black and white too. 
feels hot. Um, it's being impacted by the color correction. Let's set that the ice saddle. If you're like me, that just went kind of a cyan tone rather than blacks and whites. Um, so what if we bring the brightness of all that red stuff down? Because underneath, it's still this is still a color photo, so this is still imp imp impacting it in the same way. So you see, if I play around there, I'm playing around very much with the brightness of the guitar and the wall. I don't know if I want to, though. Oh yeah, that's better. That contrast increases better. I could do that here too, but I'm going to use that instead to even... Um, where is skin tone? Ooh, way down there. Oh, that's better. So instead of that point, what if I boost centered on the skin tone? Hmm. It's tricky because the, all this white and the black and white is being much more violent visually visually violent yeah I like that better where are my levels but no matter what I do if I bring up the if I bring up the foreground I'm bringing up the background I just bring up his face. Yeah. How's that? Is that I don't know I have to sit and look at it for a while do I want to color shift a little bit monochrome it sepia it not that much bring in a bit of cold Maybe. Could go either way. I'd be happy either way. What's right and what's wrong? So what's right about it is the dog and him are still great. This has started to go to mush a little bit. The red is not really popping. I think I made that worse. If anything, I should maybe pop that up a little bit. Not down. The brickwork below, I'm going to lighten that a tiny bit. in black and white. It starts to look that totally over-processed very quickly. Huh, that's interesting. That almost goes to like a... 
Huh. I kind of like that with less local contrast. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, I'm going to play around a little bit more. But there you go. There's a reasonably quick edit on a street photo. It's uh, 35mm lens on a full frame Nikon. Take your camera everywhere. I think that is the moral of the story. Take care, bye.